Let us join together for a moment of prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. The word persevere appears once in the Bible according to the New Revised Standard Version, and it doesn't appear at all in the King James Version. In fact, the word perseverance doesn't appear, persistence doesn't appear, and persist, not a sight. Persevere can be found in Ephesians 6.18. Paul calls his sisters and brothers to, quote, pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. While patience, endurance, patient endurance, steadfastness, enduring steadfast love, never growing weary in doing good, fearlessness in suffering, and standing firm in our faith, speak to the fruits and the essence of perseverance. The verb persevere and her sister, the noun perseverance, have no presence in Holy Scripture. Perhaps perseverance's absence from the Holy Bible can simply be attributed to the fact the word was created in the 14th century. That seems like a good enough reason for a book much older than that not to have the word. From the Latin we read perseverius, very strict and earnest, for per means very, severius means serious or grave or strict or austere. To persevere means to persist in what one has undertaken, to pursue steadily a design or a course, to continue against all odds, to endure and move steadfastly forward, to be tough in overcoming whatever you face. The word persevere and her sister, the noun perseverance, have moved into my house and into my soul in recent weeks and months. It feels like every day presents new tests and new conditions for persevering. We're all being called to persevere at a time such as this. To that end, I shared this perseverance prayer with our staff and church leaders a few weeks ago as we were entering this new year and once again found ourselves trying to balance the budget, this time in the midst of a pandemic and all of the economic challenges we have. The prayer went like this. Lord, there are days I want to quit, and there are days whose coming I dread. There are days I can imagine disasters that will never be, and gains I might never enjoy. Make me strong enough to lift this load. Make me faithful enough to carry it till day's end, and make me wise enough not to carry tomorrow's load today. Amen. In the last year, each of you have been called upon to be strong enough, faithful enough, and wise enough to lift, to carry, and to leave many loads. Each of you have had to persevere through much, facing days when you wanted to quit and days which you really dreaded when they arrived in the morning. You have experienced illness and surgeries. You have known the loss of loved ones. In the midst of this, you have found yourselves physically cut off from the people and the places that most comfort you and bring you peace. And you have prayed 
that you not be spiritually and emotionally severed from them as well. You have borne the pain of feeling that you have when you're recovering alone and the burden of knowing your beloved ones have died without you by their side. You have lost jobs. You have found your hours severely cut or your pay cut. You have witnessed the death of some of your dreams. You have felt the sting of loneliness, the isolation of being in a space all alone as you found yourself caught in the vortex of being alone too often and then venturing out in need of human contact, being told it's dangerous out there. You and your children have yearned for friends, for family, for playmates, for classmates, for grandparents and teachers. You have found yourselves staying away and saying, we must stay safe and stay healthy. Let's keep together while we're apart. Sometimes you have no idea what those words even mean anymore. You have felt and you have seen the strains of mental health conditions for yourself and the ones you love most of all. You have cried silent tears of separation and longing. You have found yourselves cluelessly teaching your children or your grandchildren in some cases for hours at a time each day and months on end. And then you've gone to bed at night realizing that their real curriculum was love and their real teacher was you. You have found yourselves turned into Zoom zombies or FaceTime fanatics while talking and laughing and playing games and hanging out, on, hanging out on all sorts of devices which have become your new appendage and your daily escape into worlds which take you out of this one blessedly for a few hours at a time, maybe longer each day. And you have missed movies and theaters and plays and playgrounds and ballparks and stadiums and all those people some of whom stand up in your way when you want to see a play, and restaurants, and some of you have even missed Chuck E. Cheese, while TV has become your best friend and your worst enemy. And many books have opened your mind and your spirit, but they've not been able to fill the void of longing to be near dear friends and family and loved ones. You have seen all four seasons of the year come and three of them go while trying to convince yourself this too shall pass. But feeling at the core of your soul like being isolated in ways you never imagined possible. Unless, of course, you are loving this as you're watching this from a cloistered convent or a monastery somewhere in the world today. But other than that, it's been painful. You and I have longed to be together in worship and in friendship with God and with one another. You have sent me some wonderful pictures of you and the kids in worship in front of your screens, in PJs, eating pancakes. Man, I wish I was there. And your children are there, and the cats and the dogs are there. I now have a fan club among some of the cats and some of the dogs. We'll keep those pictures coming. I love them all. Meanwhile, Emily and Kevin and Mark and Peter and I have been here for 47 Sundays preaching and praying, teaching and playing, singing to an empty room, believing in our deepest hearts that God is still speaking, that God is still listening, that you are out there listening and receiving and sharing and interacting with this virtual space that we have come to know as home. And by my best calculations, at least 50 
to 75 of you have battled through COVID-19. And at least 20 to 30 of our loved ones have lost their battle with COVID-19 and two more died this weekend. In each case, there are people whose stories I have yet to hear because as you have been persevering, you have been alone for too many days, apart from me, apart from we, and not shared your story with us. As a nation and a world, we have all been called to face the worst planetary, uh, planetary pandemic since 1918. We've been called to witness and experience firsthand economic challenges that have wrecked and wreaked havoc in a vast number of key sectors of our society. We have had to face or perhaps just ignore the hard truths that in all too many ways racial inequities and injustices continue in our nation, some that have been buried for 402 years or more. We have dealt with crises in housing and health care and a threat to democracy which is real and unresolved, all the while dealing with a global and growing climate crisis which must be addressed now because if we address it later, it will be too late. To persevere with all that is happening and all that has taken place has taken skills and abilities and agilities that most of us never knew we had. And yet, you have persevered through it all. But I think it's fair to say, you and I would have traded all of our perseverance for the presence of people. We would have gladly traded all of our newfound skills and perseverance for health and well-being, for peace that passes understanding, and for economic and democratic, small d, unity and solvency. Nevertheless, and our faith always dwells in the nevertheless, I am reminded by Charles R. Brown that persistent effort and perseverance drive us day by day. He writes, is anything vital ever accomplished without persistent and persevering effort? Farmers plow and sow and they keep on plowing and sowing. Miners dig and dig and they keep on digging deeper and deeper. Musicians practice and keep on practicing. Scholars study and keep on studying. And so must we too pray. If we know how prayer purifies and fortifies and enriches the inner life, we would all persevere in prayer continuously day and night. Our persistence would be productive for our life of prayer. Perseverance doesn't appear out of the vapor. It comes from something within us that gives us newfound strength and courage in the face of despair and challenge. It comes from faith in God. It comes from faith in Jesus Christ. It comes from the Holy Spirit blowing into our lives. It comes from a deep desire to turn surviving into thriving. It comes from our DNA and our ancestors in faith and family who faced a lot harder things in a lot tougher times than anything we have seen they persevered. They found a way to fight through surviving to thrive. As we step into this day and into this church's 169th year as a congregation, I pray that God will strengthen us by faith. I pray that our abolitionist ancestors will lift and carry us 
through their example of perseverance. Here at First Church, our ancestors built this cathedral of grace. They built this house of justice in the Great Depression 90 years ago. They had absolutely nothing, and they built this. They felt that beauty needed to rise and shine in the heart of darkness. They felt that their legacy would be this cathedral built from their blood, sweat, and tears. They felt and they showed us what it looks like to dream and to build out of depression and struggle. So what about us? What will we leave as our legacy? A hundred years from now, when people speak of the worst global pandemic in the history of the world, what will they say about this pulpit, about this house of prayer, about you, about me? Will they say that we face this moment together with perseverance and faithfulness, or will they say that no one actually remembers what we said and did here in our time, in our city, and in our nation's greatest hour of challenge? Will they say as followers of Jesus Christ, we rose and we found a way to move forward in faith? Or will they say that we faded and that we fell away like faithless followers of whatever? Will they say that we took on the hardships and the challenges of injustice in our time? Or will they say that we stayed safe and we hid away while all the storms assailed us and passed by? Will they say we were great stewards, that we used all the gifts that God had given us, that God had blessed us with? Or will they say that we were greedy we just held on to our little corner of the world and our concerns for ourselves and failed to care for our brothers and sisters in need. What will they say? What will they say that we did? What will they say that we said during the coronavirus crisis and all the subsidiary crises? Will they say we did the right thing? Or will they say that we did nothing at all? Let it be said when the story is told that we stood together while we were apart. Let it be said that we grew stronger in the face of all our real and dangerous challenges. And let it be said that we were great stewards of all the gifts that God blessed us with. Let it be said that we did more than persevere. We did more than survive. We thrived. Let it be said that we rose, that we shined in the time such as this. Persevere only appears once in the Bible. And in that one time, Paul uses the word very carefully. He calls upon all the followers in Ephesus and Columbus. And then and now, for all time, he calls on them, he calls on us to persevere. Not for ourselves, he says, but for all the saints of God. We persevere for all the saints of God, living and dead. He wants the Ephesians of the first century and the Christians of Columbus in the 21st century to rise in the spirit, to follow Jesus, and to pray unceasingly in the spirit of persevering for all the saints who have gone before us and all with whom we walk this path. Paul calls on us and offers us this new word for this new year in our life together. My sisters and brothers, 
pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. And to that end, keep alert and always persevere for supplications for all the saints.